Hey guys, this is Fred from Pretty Fly Games, and today we're going to continue with our top down car controller built in Unity. In the last video we finished our car controller and today we're going to focus on adding some cool effects to it, like tire marks and smoke. For the tire marks we're going to use the built-in trail renderer in Unity, which is very suitable for this kind of an effect. So with our car selected we're going into the sprite and we're adding a empty child and we will call it wheel trail renderer left wheel. Uh, so let's add a trail renderer component to that and the default values works pretty good uh, but if you move it, uh, the car, you will see that it doesn't really render anything or in some cases it can render a pink image and that's because we don't have a material. So let's start by creating a material and we will call it just uh, skid marks. And we'll make this into a regular sprite, uh, a diffuse, a default sprite, I mean. And uh, let's assign that material to uh, the trail renderer. So now we already see that it's rendering and we can move the car around to see uh, that it's, something is happening. Although it's not placed correctly and it's very wide. So let's start by uh, reducing the size of the trail renderer to something like 0.1 maybe uh, and put it uh, on the actual behind the tire let's increase it a little bit 0.2 maybe uh, like that now when we move the car we can see that the trail is actually attached behind the car but it's in the wrong sorting uh, layer that's why it's rendering on top of the car so what we need to do is change the rendering sorting layer and its default. So let's add a, a new layer and we'll call it uh, skid marks and it will be between the default and the background. Uh, so if you assigned the sorting layer as skid marks, we will notice that it actually renders okay. Then we don't want the trail marks to be white. We want them to be black so let's change that uh, we'll change the color uh, of it to black and we will just have it as pitch black all the time then uh, we need to assign an alpha a start alpha and an end alpha so the start alpha let's reduce it to something like 97 and then the end will put it to zero now, as the car moves, we will see that it actually has an, a trail behind it. We want to increase the duration, how long this trail lasts. So let's put it at something like 50 seconds. That will give us the ability to have uh, trails all over the course, basically. And it looks very nice. So if we just duplicate this and put it on the other wheel as well, and we press play, we will have uh, trails coming off the car. Uh, the only problem with these trails is that uh, they are coming out all the time and we only want them to appear when the car is braking or uh, skidding a lot. So we need to code that. So let's start uh, by adding a new script. And we will call it uh, wheel trail render handler we will add two references to two components the first one is the top down car controller and the other one is the trail render so we can basically turn it on and off and first of all we will uh, get the references in the awake function similar to as we did before so we get the top down car controller through the get component and we also get the trail renderer now the first part is that we want to set the trail render to not be emitting at all so that it doesn't add any new trail. And then in the update function, we want to be able to control when it's going to be on and off. Uh, but for this script to be able to tell whether it should actually render anything or add a new trail, we need to add a new function to our top down car controller. 
And what we want to do is we want to have a function that tells the system if it's uh, basically screeching the tires or, or not. Uh, so we'll add a new function and we'll call it is tire screeching and uh, from it we will actually give out uh, a float value the lateral velocity the sideway velocity and uh, also if it's braking or not and we will need this later on in the program so let's just add that so the first part is the lateral velocity and uh, from that we need to be able to have a function that adds uh, gets the lateral velocity so let's add that as a help function so get lateral velocity and it returns the dot product of the right and the car's velocity so uh the reason why it's red is because we need to assign the output values before uh, this function leaves and right now it's not uh, being assigned so let's add that the first one is the lateral velocity and we just use our function get lateral velocity the other part is if it's breaking or not uh, and uh, we'll just set it as false to start with now if we look at uh, in the cases where we want the tires to be screeching so first of all we want to see if it's basically the car is going forward and the user is uh, hitting the brake button then we want a nice brake trail to appear so if we are checking if it's moving forward and basically if the acceleration input is backwards the user is braking then we should uh, actually return that it's braking and that we should produce uh, tire screeching then we have the other case if uh, the players is skidding so they are driving and they're drifting a lot then we want uh, trails to appear as well so we'll add that as a case if uh, we have a lot of uh, lateral velocity larger than four this is a value as well that you can adjust to well to fit your game then we will also uh, return uh, true basically and if nothing of these uh, are true then we will return uh, false all right so let's get back to our wheel trail renderer uh, and uh, in the update function we will check if the top down con car controller is screeching if it is then we want the trail renderer to emit uh, and if it's not then we want it to stop emitting like so all right so in unity let's select our uh, trail renderers and we'll add the wheel trail renderer script to them now if we hit play we should hopefully have a trail that does not appear all the time and if we skid like that uh, drift then it produces a nice trail uh, as well if we hit the brake button then it produces uh, as well a trail so this effect is, is something that you can tune to have if you want to have strong trail marks or a little bit weaker and if you want them to stay on screen or not and you can change the value how long they are supposed to stay uh, now, this is not uh, that high performance or it doesn't require any performance at all. So you can actually leave them and have a nice trail marks as you race across the courses, basically. So the second part that we're going to look into is adding some particle effects to have some nice smoke appear when the car is, uh, is basically braking and, and drifting. So let's look at that. So let's add a child to the sprite and we will call it uh, particle system smoke left wheel. Let's add a particle system component to it. And uh, as you see, it's not uh, emitting any particles. And the reason is that the material is uh, not set or it can be pink on your screen. So let's add a new particle uh, material and we'll call it smoke particle. 
and uh, first of all let's click the albedo and uh, set the smoke fluffy sprite and uh, so it uses that and then we change it into the sprite default so now we can see that it has this nice fluffy look and uh, we will assign that material in the in the particle system all right now we got a bunch of particles and uh, the first thing we need to do is change the sorting layer so it's big renders on top of everything and uh, let's add a new material called part or a uh, sorting lane called particles that I already did before and uh, so now we have particles on top of the car uh, which is nice but there's uh, a bit too many of them so let's reduce uh, the max particle count to something like 30 because we will want to make it very efficient so we can use uh, a lot of cars at the same time then we also want to basically reduce uh, the lifetime so they don't stay as long on the screen and we will use uh, a random between two constants so it's not the same all the time and we will use a lifetime of one between one and two awesome uh, then we will set the start speed to use zero so it appears just on top of the wheel and we will also change the simulation space from local to world if it's set on local it will stay with the car no matter what uh, and uh, apply its rotation etc and it will look just weird so let's use world because then uh, it uh, renders independently from the, the car then uh, we have some uh, additional things that we want to change like the emission shape we can change that into a hemisphere and just make it uh, a little bit smaller probably something like 0 0.3 maybe uh, and uh, now we basically have a, a particle system on the left wheel let's uh, duplicate it to the right wheel as well and if we drive the car now it will emit uh, particles uh, all the time which is not what we want so what we do is we go into our particle systems and we will change the emission to zero because we will be controlling this uh, through a script but let's just leave it at 30 for a little bit longer and what we want to do is as well change um, the size uh, over lifetime so it changes how it looks and we want it to basically start uh, as pretty big particles or actually we'll, we'll start at zero because uh, and and then we will add a key and bring it up to uh, a big value or the 1.0 value so now we have a, a fluffy uh, smoke that starts from zero and goes up to one fairly quickly and then goes down again to zero now we want to change the color a little bit so it actually fades away as well so we add uh, uh, this color over lifetime and we want it to basically change the alpha to zero uh, so it fades out and we probably will change the start as well to make it slightly transparent so it doesn't cover everything all right that looks uh, quite nice so let's uh, set the emission again to zero so we can control it uh, instead uh, from uh, our uh, script right zero right so let's go down to the scripts and create a new script to handle the em smoke emission We'll call the script wheel particle handler and let's open it in Visual Studio. Uh, so the first thing we will need is a local variable called particle emission rate that uh, basically controls how, f how many particles we're going to emit. Then we're going to need some references to a few components. The first one is our uh, top down car controller. And the second part is the, is the actual uh, particle system in Unity. And uh, what we need is a sub-module of that, which is called uh, an emission module. So we will just store it like that. Uh, and in our awake function, 
we will basically uh, get a few components. So let's add our awake function. The first one is uh, the top down car controller like we've done before. The second one is the particle system. And the little bit tricky part is uh, getting the emission part of the particle system. But we can do it uh, through this way. And what we want to do is set it to zero uh, emission as a start, uh, just as the trail renderer. And then in our uh, update function, we're going to basically have um, the first part is going to be a, a lerp. Uh, that uh, reduces the emission rate over time so it slowly decreases how many particles we are emitting from whatever value it has to zero now for it to emit we want it uh, we want to be able to do that when we are either braking or or when we are drifting with the car so let's use uh, the function we created earlier in the top down car controller called is tire screeching. And uh, what we will do is basically have two cases uh, where we are uh, testing for this. So the first one is if we are braking, then we want to em uh, emit a lot of particles, actually all of them. So we'll go for the 30, which is the max limit right now. Uh, or if the car is drifting, we want to uh, basically use the lateral velocity as uh, how much particles we're going to emit. And we'll just uh, multiply it by two, which is a nice value. So if we go back into Unity again. So let's select our particle systems and assign the new scripts to them. Ah, come on. <laughs> All right, here we go. If we hit the play button now, we should have a nice uh, smoke particles when we are drifting or when we are braking. Uh, now the particles appear a little bit behind the car. And uh, the reason for this is actually because um, we have uh, set the curve, the size of, of it over lifetime. If we select both particles systems we can see that it's starting at zero which is um, causing it to appear slightly behind it so what we'll do is bring it up to something like 0 0.5 this is a value that you can change and make sure that it fits the visuals of your game basically if we hit play again it should appear much closer to the car now so there we have a nice smoke system and the, the nice brakes trail marks uh, for the for the tires basically uh, so the next part uh, of this is that we're going to add some sound effects so it uh, has some nice screeching and some maybe slightly annoying uh, engine sounds however that will be added in next video if you want to get a notification when we're ready with that video please hit the subscribe button Here's an example from our game, Total Arcade Racing, which uses this component for its physics. You can find the game on Steam and take it for a spin if you want. Thanks for watching the video and I hope that you enjoyed it.